It's a brand new week in the National Football League as your Seattle Seahawks square off in the biggest game of the year so far, taking on the San Francisco 49ers, the arch rivals from right here in the NFC West in the John Madden Thanksgiving celebration. We're going to enjoy some turducken and hopefully a Seahawks win. The Seahawks desperately need this game to keep up with the Niners in the division and also to get back on track after a performance last week against the Rams, a game that they had no business losing. They go into Thursday, a game back of San Francisco at 6-4, and four, San Fran at 7-3. and three. You win this one, then you're tied for the division and have the tiebreaker with another matchup coming in a couple weeks when these two teams will square off once again that time in San Francisco. Between now and kickoff on Thursday, we're doing a sub-battle between our Niners channel and us here at Seahawks today. They got a little bit of an edge on new subs this week, but don't worry. There's still plenty of time to catch up with our Niners channel. Let's beat them in our sub-battle this week. Sub for Seahawks dubs. Join the family and be a part of what we're doing each and every day here on Seahawks Today. Subscribe now for free. Let's start with the injury report for your Seattle Seahawks. And Geno Smith, questionable with a triceps injury. The last we heard from Pete Carroll was that his status is uncertain at this time, although he did come back on Sunday from the injury to finish off that game against the Rams. Jamal Adams missed last week against the Rams with a knee injury. He's questionable. Tariq Young with an abdomen injury. He's questionable. Abraham Lucas still waiting to see when his return will be dealing with that knee injury. He's in his 21-day window now to make his return. Kenneth Walker left last week's game with an oblique injury. He's also questionable, as is Jarek Reed with a knee injury there. Meanwhile, for San Francisco, their injury report a little bit shoulder. A couple of their players, uh, as we see, you know, an, an ACL injury that's knocking out uh, TH for the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Aaron Banks uh, is questionable with that toe injury there. And just kind of breaking down the injury report, the key takeaway for me is that when you look at the Niners, how well-rounded that roster is from 1 to 53, if you're Seattle, it's going to take all hands on deck in order to beat this San Francisco 49ers team. Not only are you going to have to play a perfect game, but you're going to need as many bodies as you possibly can to get through this game. And to me, that makes me very nervous for this matchup on Thursday, knowing how shorthanded you already are going into this one, not knowing what the status is of your quarterback, your top running back, one of your top safeties, not a great position to be. We will predict this game coming up later on in the show. I'll give you my final score, who I think is going to win, but want to hear from you guys first. Predict it. Our pin comment today. Who wins? What's the final score going to be? Let us know in the comment section below. Now our keys to a Seahawks victory. Number one, stopping the run. It's going to be so important for this Seattle Seahawks team to do what they can to shut down Christian McCaffrey, who very well, I think, is the best non-quarterback in the entire National Football League. When we talk talent, doesn't get any better than Christian McCaffrey. And he just shredded the Seahawks in their two meetings that they faced against him last year when he was traded at the trade deadline. They faced him in that late season contest, then the playoff game again. He was a problem. And Seattle has to do whatever they can to try to take away Christian McCaffrey, minimize his impact as much as possible, which is really easier said than done. McCaffrey has been awesome this season. Nine touchdowns, 825 yards, also has had – a big impact in the receiving game. And we've seen that when the Niners have McCaffrey minimized and Debo Samuel minimized, the offense changes quite a bit. They really are not as explosive if you can take away Christian McCaffrey. And think about this, the reliance on running the football, even beyond Christian McCaffrey here, when you talk about this Niners team, they run the ball 50% of the time which is the second most of any team in the National Football League. So if you can take away the run, I like my chances of trying to make Brock Purdy beat you with his arm and in the passing game there. To me, it's very pivotal to slow down that Niners rushing attack. 
What do you hate most about the Niners here? Sip on that haterade. Get in that comment section. Tell me what you hate most about the Niners. For me, it's that nasty city of San Francisco. All the needles, all the homeless people. It's just a nasty place. San Francisco at one point was a fine city. One of the nicest places in America. And now it's just, pardon my French, gone to shit. What do you hate most about San Francisco? That's my answer. It's the city of San Fran. What do you hate most about the Niners? Get in that comment section. Let me know what it is. Number two in our keys to victory, attacking through the air. Now, I know that the Niners have been well regarded as such a well-rounded team and all the things that they do well. But as you scout this Niners team, this may surprise some folks, but one of the weaknesses is their pass defense. Their pass defense hasn't played that great throughout much of 2023, and the Seahawks have to capitalize and take advantage on the weakness that is the Niners' pass defense. Looking at these statistics here, opponent pass play percentage, 31st in the NFL. Opponent completion percentage, 21st in the NFL. Opponent passes per game, 30th in the league. Passing yards per game, 30th in the league. And sack percentage, they don't get after the quarterback as much as you would expect when you have the likes of Bosa and Chase Young and company, 22nd in the league when it comes to sack percentage. There's one man, one man only, that needs to have a huge night that will have the most effect on the passing game. That is our guy, Geno Smith. I expect Geno to play, and if he doesn't, then we're in a whole lot of trouble. Drew Locke's going to be the guy. But looking at what Geno's done, his passing statistics, he's had a down year, comparably speaking to what he did in 2022. But we know that Geno is capable of turning it up on any given night, in any given time, and we're going to need to see Geno play his best, play perfect football in order to get a win and really just attack that secondary for San Francisco if Seattle is going to have a chance. Today's show is sponsored by Price Picks. Price Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. You pick two or more players on any given category. You get the choice of more or less, whether you want to do passing yards, whether it's receptions, receiving yards, fantasy points, all sorts of different options you can go with on Prize Picks. I got a little college special for you on Prize Picks. It's rivalry week in college football. I love college football. This one's for producer Big Tex, his favorite player in college football, Drake Stoops, Texas alum, uh, Big Tex that is. Loves Drake Stoops, although I got him having less than 86 and a half receiving yards against TCU. That number seems a bit high. Kyle McCord, Ohio State quarterback. How is he supposed to have more than 255.5 passing yards when Michigan knows all their signs and knows exactly what they're going to do offensively? Not to mention Kyle McCord's not that great of a quarterback. I got less on him as well. If those two hit, we're turning $20 into $60. Play along with me today. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Connor Stallion's going to help make us some money this weekend. Play along today. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Link is in the comments and description of today's video. Number three on Keys to Victory for Seattle is limiting mistakes. As I've said previously, and I will reiterate, it is going to have to take a perfect game to beat this San Francisco 49ers team. And in particular, there's two big things the Seahawks have to do and that's cut back on penalties and turnovers, and penalties especially. Last week, he got called for 12 penalties over 100 yards. It was just nasty, and it's stuff that I would expect if it was week two of the preseason, not week 12 of the damn regular season. Right now, Seahawks are last in penalties per play, last in penalties per game, last in penalty yards per game. That's unacceptable. That can't happen anymore, folks. And then the turnover margin. Just look at this. Ninth in turnover margin. Not bad. Top 10. Giveaways per game. Seventh in the league. That's not bad. But takeaways per game's got to improve. Interceptions thrown. Thrown a few too many picks. Geno is. That's got to improve. Now Drew Locke's part of that number based on that pick he had last week as well. Got to clean up the little things. Need a perfect game. Can't afford to be making those mistakes. Number four, pressure on Brock Purdy. Now, what did we see happen 
on Sunday for the Seattle Seahawks when they faced the Los Angeles Rams. They didn't get after the quarterback. And what happened week one when they lost to the Rams? They didn't get after the quarterback. We have seen this Seahawks pass rush look awesome at times and then just fall flat. And they have to bounce back. And you have to get after Brock Purdy if you're going to have a chance in this game. And so far, the Niners have done a relatively good job of protecting Brock Purdy this season. He's only been sacked 20 times so far this year, tied for 22nd most among quarterbacks in the NFL this year. So they've done a pretty good job protecting him. Trent Williams, of course, one of the greatest offensive tackles of all time, uh, holding things down. He's a problem anytime you have to face him trying to get after the quarterback. But there's one man in particular I'm looking at that needs to have a big game, that really needs to get after Purdy and give him hell, and that's Boye Mafe. Boye Mafe, currently the Seahawks' leading sack getter with seven so far this season. His streak, unfortunately, came to an end last week of seven straight games with a sack. We need a new streak to start this week, folks. His numbers from PFF back up the statistics of how well he's played, too. You're looking at a guy that's had grades, an overall grade. He's not just a good pass rusher, but just a well-rounded edge rusher with an 80 overall grade, 79.4 pass grade. Watch out for Boye Mafe. He needs to have a big night for Seattle and really get after Brock Purdy. Who's a player that needs to step up for the Seahawks? I say it's Boye. Who comes to mind for you? Get in that comment section. Give me a name that you would like to see have a big night for Seattle and get the John Madden turducken leg at the end of the game. Who is it? Let me know what you think. Last but not least on our keys to victory for the Seahawks is next man up. That next man up mentality. And for Seattle in particular, we're looking at Zach Charbonnet. We don't know. Kenneth Walker is going to play or not after that injury he suffered last week. Zach Charbonnet stepped up in his place, and he did a fairly decent job. And now what the Seahawks need to do is be able to rely on Zach Charbonnet because we don't know if he's going to get the majority of the workload or not now. But anyways, if his name is called upon, if he has to be that guy, He needs to be trusted to be that guy. He hasn't gotten the end zone so far this season. He's been a decent pass catcher. Charbonnet, basically, the way I would put it this way is you don't need to miss a beat. You need to be able to trust Charbonnet just as much as you would Kenneth Walker. Think about last year when Rashad Penny went down. The run game didn't slow down at all going with Kenneth Walker. It needs to be the same in this case here. You may not have Kenneth Walker, but Zach Charbonnet needs to keep this train moving and and keep the the momentum there as far as that goes. So, with that said, our keys to a Seahawks victory. Stopping the run. Got to do what you can. Take away Christian McCaffrey. Attack through the air. The Niners do not have uh, a very good pass defense. Got to take advantage of that. Limit mistakes. Going to take a perfect game to get this done. Pressure on Brock Purdy. Looking at you, Boye Mafe. Let's start a new streak this week. Next man up needs Zach Charbonnet to have a big game for the Seahawks in place of Kenneth Walker, or even if Kenneth Walker is not 100% uh, for Charbonnet to be trusted upon to play a significant role. With that said, though, I'm picking the Niners. I know I'm probably going to Seahawks jail for this, but this is the first time I've picked against the Seahawks all year. To me, the Niners are are just too much. Uh, I think they're the second-best team in the NFC, Uh, only to the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going to be a lot to handle. That roster is stacked. The Seahawks have so many injuries, and and they're not playing great football right now. I got to go with the Niners, 27 to 20. Who do you got? Who wins? What's the final score going to be? Let us know in that comment section. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm going to Seahawks jail. Let us know in that comment section how the game plays out. Subscribe now to Seahawks Today. We're going to be live on Thursday night for our Seahawks Niners watch party. We will see you then. Thanks for joining us here on Seahawks Today.